Hello, Mr. Skeleton. Oh my gosh! So hello, this is Hawk Jelly slash Gary here, and I'm going to be doing a Minecraft, another Minecraft video. Okay, this is where I left off, and I will now quickly change this to peaceful. Okay, so I have seen a few map making techniques here. I think I, I have come up with, I think it's three. No, four, I think. So, yeah, this is going to be a pretty action-packed video. So, this first one is about dialogue. Now, instead of rant, just placing signs with text on them, I've found out that if you rename an item and place it in an item frame, it actually shows that up. So, right here, I like this sign in the item frame and named it Halubigary's House. So, when I look at this item in the item frame, it will say Halubigary's House, which is, I think, pretty awesome. So then, here's another thing. This is like for a small narrative. You can make this a lot longer and have its whole map, but this is the narrative sign, this is me, and then this is the creeper. So, basically, this is the main information. And then if you need more information, have it th there than there. And this is whatever the object is holding in the hand. Now, the narrative won't have anything in this spot. So, you go into the creeper's house. So then you go into the next spot. The creeper says... What are you doing here? He said, eating cake, duh, because he's holding a piece of cake. I responded, but why in my house? Then he takes out a diamond sword. He yelled, then he flipped out and tried to kill me with, to kill you with a sword. Finn. So, this is a simple way of doing that. I think it's a lot nicer than placing down signs, but I will warn you, um, it's odd. Okay, no idea what that was. You can only place 29, I think it's 29, could be 30, probably is 30, but I counted 29 letters in one, sign, like, one item. So that's why over here... I did put two, and that's why you should put two a lot of the times if it won't fit. So, the next technique I made is a pathfinding zombie. I didn't actually make this one up. I saw Seth Blank's video and thought it was pretty cool. So, basically what you do is you have this little area, and you get a villager and a zombie. Now, this could be used for an adventure map as like a guide if you want the guide to like help you get through the maze you could like ask for this if you really needed some help but yeah so this is basically how it works so I'm gonna get a zombie then you will see it work for yourself change it to easy so but what you want to do is once you make your maze I made this with Seth Bling's maze filter you can place the zombie wherever you'd like to, in an enclosed area at the end. So, that's the villager. So, as you know, that the zombie will follow the villager because of its follow range. Now, it will immediately be attracted toward it when I open this. So, he actually will find the correct path through the maze. And he won't mess up. He has to go the right way because it's programmed into Minecraft. That's basically explaining Sithling's video, and then he will appear at the end. So you could use this for a map following guide, which is pretty cool. So that's two of the techniques I've come up with. Um, what was the third one? That's odd. I can't even remember it. Um... Oh yes, the custom spawners. Now this is actually really neat because these actually spawn this own custom mob. It won't just spawn any old zombie. It will only spawn this custom. So you, this is the mage. 
It is a zombie in golden armor holding a potion of weakness. I think it is right there. This is the archer. It's a zombie with chainmail, um, hat, leather, chest plate, ch chainmail leggings, and leather boots. Then this is the, um, tank, as a lot of things call it. He has a diamond sword and this, and it actually takes eight hits to hit with my really strongly enchanted diamond sword. It takes 11 hits with a normal one. As you can see, they're extremely difficult to kill these guys. These are the knights. They have chainmail, head, chest, plate, with iron, and chainmail, then iron boots. So those are the four people. And they're all attracted to the villager. This is an, a tower defense game that I'm still currently working on. It's going to be cool once I can like, you know, get more on it done, but that's the technique. I will show you how to actually make these custom spawners at the end of the video. It's actually kind of, like, simple, but you will need MC Edit, so if you don't have MC Edit, I'd suggest that you get that if you want to see what it is. So, then I want to show you this boss fight I came up with. Now, this is actually quite interesting. I thought it was neat. So, you, I suggest having the chainmail armor. As you can see, it actually is kind of big, but that is only because of these repeaters that make the length. If you have any eyes, I really don't think that you want to know what is in here. It's just a whole bunch of fire resistance potions. So I will explain what all this odd stuff does at the end of showing you how this works. So this is a skeleton boss in Minecraft, which is really cool. Now, you might think that this takes a lot of redstone. It's actually the simplest thing in the world. Now, this could be probably really scammy and horrible, but this is actually kind of cool. It's kind of quick, too, and I put the scoreboard up on the side, as you can see right over there. It just shows how much health I have in half hearts. So right now I'm at full health, and I'm going... You're supposed to stand next to the button and click to battle the Skeleton King. Now, you only stand next to the button because of the corner. The Skeleton can't shoot you until they're all ready. Now you'll see what ready means. As you can see, all that's happening is that a whole bunch of potions are being thrown. Fire resistance potions they are. And you gotta keep going until the skeleton stops spawning. Now, there's one thing that makes this the king skeleton. few things. First one is that they all come together and look awesome. And two, because they shoot a billion arrows at you at the same time. And then they fire out and do that. I've actually died on this before. Then it says hi because I won, kind of. Because they haven't emitted an output yet. But basically, what it does when there's nothing left on the pressure plate. Now, I haven't added the part where you come in or come out. But yeah, so explaining how this works. Basically, it spawns about 70 skeletons in the same spot. And shoots a whole bunch of fire resistance potions. I think I ran out of splash potions, but that doesn't matter. I can easily redo that. So, that's what, basically how you do it. You just put a whole bunch of lava so that they won't fall out. Now, I can sh actually demonstrate how this works a little bit better. Because, if you place a block down in complete mid-air, with nothing for it to land on, it actually won't move from its position. I made a, um... You can make a villager cannon out of this. I thought it was pretty cool. So you just spam the block right on the side. Like right there. And it just is going to spawn a whole bunch of villagers. Now they will combine and make this. So I'm going to turn down the volume because it's really annoying. So basically, you can keep doing this. And then it makes a kind of little awesome little shape. Now, what you can do is you can make a platform 
and then you can either hit it with a fishing rod or shoot it with an arrow. I'm, I'm going to shoot it with an arrow because that seems to be easier. And watch. Oh, too many. You got to keep doing it, and then it will all explode once you have enough. I'm just going to do it from here. Odd. There we go. Boom. Everywhere. I think that you have to hit them on the bottom, not on the top. Let me show you that again. It actually works with any mob. The reason that I like it for skeleton is because they will actually shoot at you. And when they do, they all shoot at the exact same time and shoot at 70 arrows. And the skeleton boss will actually look different every time because of the fact that they randomly spawn skeletons with different armor. Okay, yeah. I haven't exactly found out how many you need. So, when there's the right number, they'll all explode. But as you see, my bow is pretty powerful because it's just like knocking these people down. Even if they not the die of fall damage. Die already. There we go. Wee! Villager cannon. Awesome. I don't actually find any real meaning for that, but yeah, that was my third thing. Now that I have shown you my dialogue, Maze Falling Zombie, and the boss, I will show you my custom spawners. So you need two MC Edit filters that Seth Bling has made. You need the um, Create Geared Mods filter and the Create Spawner filter. So you can go over to Seth Bling's video that he made of that. It's probably better than mine. But, you know, because nobody ever watches this. So basically, you want to place down a chest. Like, exactly like that. Now, you also, you can put down what armor he has on. So that means all of this armor. And then what he's holding in his hand. Funny thing is, you can actually put blocks on his head. So if you were making, like, an ice map, you could have an ice block on his head. Which is kind of funny. So... Well, I'm actually going to make a ice baka. I have no idea why. I just feel like it, so don't judge me. And I'm going to take this. So I'm going to give him my Sintakwanot axe I just copied. And then you want to put in what he's holding, his boots, his leggings, his chase plate, then he, what he's wearing on his head. So now that this ice will show right on top of his head like he's wearing it. So now that you do that, you're going to go and... Go into MC Edit. No idea what that is, and I really don't care. Uh, I don't care, so I'm not gonna ask what that is. So basically, you can stay in Minecraft. You just have to get out of the world and hit Save and Quit the Title. So then I'm just gonna, you know, minus that. Open. There we go. So now that it's open, you want to open your world by hitting load world then it will show all your worlds and then you want to hit your the world mine is ZTD test don't ask me why I just decided it hit load then you end up in the world right where you left off so as you can see this is a rough copy of my world the red are the entities so when you go up to the chest you want to not double click it but you want to just click it kind of slowly you should probably get familiar with MC Edit. You left click to choose from this. This is how you start off. Then you just, um, I think you can hit escape. Yeah, you can hit escape or, um, right click. Yeah, right click to change. And this one you can move around by holding left click and moving around. But when you hit left click, it will change to this, to just the square. And then that you can fly around. When you're in this mode, you can only do that and move around from the angle that you're at. So, it's kind of annoying, but once you have this chest highlighted, you want to go to filter. 
I don't have very many filters, luckily. So then you want to go to create gear, no, create gear mobs there. So then you have all this. You really don't have to worry about this stuff. I just keep, I just keep it at five. Then you can choose if you want a zombie, pig zombie, wither skeleton. So I like. I'm gonna make a zombie. And then you can choose if it's a baby or a villager. I'm gonna not do that. No, you know what? Make it a baby. They're cute. So then when you click that, it will turn into an entity. Now you want to go back to select, and since the filter doesn't work, unless you, um, because you kind of have to highlight a very strong area, like a big area of stuff. So you just want to make a 3x3 three three cube around the mob, like this, for example. It goes one into the ground, then two up. So I basically just made a cube over that red block. And then you can go back to filter. Go to create spawners that you downloaded. And then you can do include position data. I really don't think it matters. When you hit that, you should get a spawner right there. And that will spawn your geared mob. Now, if you want to know how to install these, um, I can actually show you how to do that. So... Okay, so I've got it. On a Mac, you want to switch to this right there. Then, what you want to search of contents once you hit Show Package Contents on MC Edit. From there, you want to go to Resources. Yeah, so then this comes up. Then you want to go to Filters. Just take your downloaded filter and the PY file and the PYO file and just put them in here. And that's all the filters I have in MC Edit. If you really want to know. So, um, I'd add potion effect, change entities, ban slimes, change mob properties. Those are all right there. So, that's pretty much how you do that. And that's really all I have to show you in this video. So, just to show you that this works, I'm going to exit out, save it. Still don't know what that is. And go back into the world. As you can see, you have a baby zombie with a floating ice block. Yeah. The baby zombie doesn't actually take the block. So, that's kind of stinks. But, you know, you get what you get. Good again yeah and I got instant health for a really long time awesome okay so now I'm going to change this to hard and change it to night Yep, and I just saw one go away. He went over here. Yeah, and there he is. A little baby zombie. Holding a really powerful axe. Now, the floating ice block is kind of cool. But, the reason why I didn't do it is because it's a baby zombie. Put it on a normal zombie, and it will work. So, going over here again... You can watch him just spawn here. I did not like cheat or anything. I don't want to see how powerful he is, too. Spawn. I'm hard. You aren't spawning, dude. Not nice. Whoa! Oh my gosh, that was so. Oh my gosh, he's so powerful. Oh my gosh, he's taking away so many of my hearts. Oh my gosh, ow. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I died. That, see, those guys are so powerful. I set my spawn point in here. But yeah, those guys are so freaking strong. So, anyway, that's basically those four things I wanted to show you. Now you could basically make that guy invincible but that's because this guy has 12.25 attack damage 
which is a lot. Deathbringer is 13.25, just by adding sharpness to it. So that's really what I wanted to show you in this video. I hope.